All right. All right, all right, all right. Going live. Hey, we're going live. This is Daniel Lovett. Welcome to Night Owl Bible Study with Daniel Lovett. Hey, you know what? Uh, and this, this, <laughs> I got to tell you something. It's so cool. Um, about a couple of years ago, I did like this prophetic painting thing, you know, and I, and I thought it'd be fun to bring my kids while, you know, handling my kids and, uh, it was kind of a fiasco, but I felt bad for the person <laughs> who was, who was putting it on, but she was so good. She was like, she took such an interest in my, my two girls that I brought and, um, uh, and set them up with their, their canvases and paints and stuff. It was so cool. It was a, like a prophetic thinking, a prophetic painting. So basically what you do is you like, you ask the Lord, what's on, what's on your heart? And, you know, for me to paint, um, and guess what we painted me and my girl. Boom. <laughs> I just stumbled across this uh, the other night. I was like, what? No way. Okay. So yeah, we, uh, night owl Bible study. <laughs> So this is this is prophetic. It's prophetic that I even have this ministry now. Night Owl Bible. It's a thing, and it's it's like we we painted the owl in gold. That's got to be symbolic. <sighs> yeah. So how fun is that? I'm gonna keep it right up here on my shelf so everybody can see it. So we dive in. We diving in. Night Owl. That's why I'm wearing the shades. It's Night Owl Bible. <laughs> because of my night vision all these lights are blinding to my owl eyes hey everybody so thank you for joining me here on night owl i'm not even sure if there's anybody on i got maybe a couple couple people watching so far but we're diving into a topic tonight that spans the scriptures far more than i could even cover in one episode question is, what is a Christian mystic? You've heard me talk about it probably. You've probably seen that, yes, I ha host a, a page, a community page, I might add. It's to build community and to encourage the community of those who are awakening. Awakening to who Jesus is and who we are in him and as him it's brilliant it's brilliant so i've written somewhat about it there's some favorite verses i want to highlight and we're gonna we're gonna dive in and talk about it okay i'll even copy and paste things into this uh into the discussion i would like to hear any of your any of your questions any of your comments any of your concerns so I'm sure somebody out there has a concern. What is this Christian mystic business? First of all, mystic is derived from a very uh, from a Christian Christian word, <laughs> a Greek word that's very Christian because it's something Jesus Himself, the Christ, uh, said. Um, it's pretty amazing. Let me see if I can pull up the exact reference I'm talking about here. All right, here it is. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> I got my notes like all um, kind of scattered about. So I'll just start at the beginning. And we'll get to those uh, the scripture I was talking about where Jesus, Jesus uses the word mysterion. Paul is quite fond of the word. He uses it in Colossians 2. Verses two and three. And this is one of my favorite passages of scripture to describe what a Christian mystic is all about. And Paul says, I am contending for you that your hearts will be wrapped in the comfort of heaven and woven together into love's fabric. This will give you access to all the riches of God as you experience the revelation of God's great mystery. There's that Greek word mysterion from which we get the word mystery and mystic and mysticism. It's all derived from that word mysterion. So God's great mystery is you experience the revelation 
of God's great mystery, Christ. For our spiritual wealth is in him, like hidden treasure waiting to be discovered, heaven's wisdom and endless riches of revelation knowledge. That's beautiful. That's brilliant. And I, I pray that each one of us can dive in, dive into the mystery that is Christ. It's all about Christ. And it's a mystery that's been revealed. See, it's the revelation, experiencing the revelation of God's great mystery. But guess what? The veil is only taken away in Christ. You know, you, you remember that passage of um, where Paul, he encounters Christ and knocked off his horse by this blinding light, the light of Christ. And <laughs> he hears the Lord speak to him, you know. Um, well, first of all, the Lord said, Paul says, who are you, Lord? And he recognizes he's the Lord, right? Who are you, Lord? And he says, I am, I am Jesus. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, right? And he, and he gives him his new commissioning. Well, he, he gets, he ends up in Damascus and, <clears throat> and, um, Ananias, uh, is told, Hey, go, go. Uh, this is how, this is just an example of what it is to be a Christian mystic. You hear from the Lord, right? You hear from him, you see him, you experience him. So Ananias experiences him. He's praying, you know, because, <laughs> And, and the Lord comes to him and says, okay, go to to, to, to Paul, or Saul, actually, on, on the street called Straight in Damascus and uh, deliver this message and, uh, you know, heal him. So he goes there, he heals his blindness, and it says something like scales fall from his eyes. Okay? That, that, that his, his spiritual blindness is healed. And all of a sudden he realizes, oh my gosh, you know? Well, I, I too have had a, uh, a spiritual awakening. The scales, so to speak, fell from my eyes. And it was ac ac during this night owl Bible study, as I was you know, going through the Gospel of John, I got to John chapter 8 uh, about uh, whom the sun sets free will be free indeed, and the truth will set you free. And I knew that the next chapter was about Jesus healing the blind. You know, uh, He says, I've come to heal. To, to open the eyes of those who are blind, you know, and, and to keep those blind who say they can see. So I didn't want to make that proud, arrogant mistake of, of saying I can see when I can't, you know, when I knew I couldn't, I couldn't see. I was still, I was still blind in so many ways. I knew it. And so I, I knew I just needed an appointment with God. I needed to deal with whatever it was that was causing all this existential angst and causing me to self-sabotage, you know, all the time. Like, why was I doing this? Why was I self-sabotaging? Well, the Lord answered that question that night. And I, 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 re I also, you know, I came across this scripture where it says, unless a kernel of wheat dies, it remains alone. And I didn't want to... <laughs> remain alone, you know, so to speak. Uh, and, and that speaks of like, you know, and then it speaks of like, once it dies, it, it yields a harvest 30, 60 or hundred fold, you know, 30, 60 or hundred times as much, you know, this, this harvest that, that comes from, from one grain of wheat dying. Right. So I'm like, Lord, let this kernel die. What does that even mean? Well, <laughs> glad you asked. Paul spelled it out when he said, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in you. It's coming out of the, out of the realize it's, it's coming out of the, the knowledge that you are just you because you're not just you. You are one with Christ. And in so, and, 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 and also one with everyone else who's one with Christ and uh, the host of heaven in particular. So, I'll take these off now because I can see. I once was blind, but now I can see. Yay. It's so great. So eternal life means, uh, this is Jesus' definition of what eternal life means, okay? Uh, so um, there's a guy named author uh, uh, 
Richard Rohr, he, he defines a mystic as, as the experiential, experiential knowledge of God. And hey, funny thing, that's exactly how Jesus defines eternal life, experientially knowing God, right? And, and here's what Jesus had to say um, in, in John 17, 3. This is from the Passion Translation. It's a translation I've been kind of referencing a lot, uh, mainly because I, I interviewed uh, Brian Simmons. And so I'm taking a look at this this new translation. I interviewed him on Sozo Talk Radio. Highly recommendable. Go check that out at sozotalkradio.com. Here's what Jesus says. He says, eternal life means to know and experience you. He's, he's praying at this point. You, Father, as the one only true God, and to know and experience Jesus Christ as the Son whom you have sent. Wow. Yeah, we get to experience Jesus Christ, and I've been experiencing Jesus Christ for the last month. It really felt like I had a born again experience, and that's something Jesus says in John chapter three: "Unless you are born again, you won't see the kingdom of of heaven." And uh, he says elsewhere, "Narrow is the is the is the gate, and and, and narrow the road that leads to life. Narrow the way." that leads to life. Jesus is the narrow way. And, and then Jesus says, few there be that find it. Well, the Lord was gracious gracious to me uh, on May 22nd, 2019. I found. I, I came into heaven. I came, I came through that narrow way and I was born again into the kingdom. <sighs> the kingdom of the Christ life, the kingdom of Christ. Now, I don't necessarily want to to make a new doctrine out of this because certainly uh, certainly I've been walking with God for a very long time. It, it just I just had my my blindness. I had my hangups. I, I, I didn't experience um, all the <laughs> I've never had this level of an open vision to be sure. I mean it lasted five hours and I, I still go into it from time to time, which is really cool. Um, of, of coming into uh, <laughs> coming into heaven and and really what I was shown is and, and this is something I've been saying since I was since I was young I was, I've been saying heaven is not so much of a place as it is a person and see this is what I was shown I was shown that yeah it's it's Christ Christ is eternal life Christ is heaven uh, it's it and 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 I was uh, it was just brilliant I'm not going to go into all the details of that um right now because we're just covering this you know this topic of christian mystic tonight but but yeah i met jesus face to face and introduced to the host of heaven and a uh, five hour uh, conversation ensued in tongues which i I, tr I understood perfectly it was in in kind of a heaven heaven language all right every born again believer in the kingdom of god is a christian mystic um, because as Jesus defined it, eternal life is not something we receive when we die. Eternal life is someone we receive now, someone with whom we are in relationship. Jesus, the Christ. Yes, we enjoy the one who is eternal life and a the free gift of restored relationship with Jesus. So, um, the mystical experiences. Here's the evidence that you are indeed a Christian mystic, because a Christian mystic hears God, right? We got voices in our head. <laughs> yes, the Lord speaks to us. Um, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. Every single one of my sheep hear my voice. So if you are part of his metaphorical flock as one of his sheep, you have had the mystical experience of hearing God's voice. It's guaranteed. If you've, you know, because we we come to him because we we hear him, right? Um, my sheep hear my voice, he says in John 10. And I know them and they follow me and I give eternal life to them and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand. I and the father are one. And Jesus later reveals that we too are one 
with him. He says, in that day, you will know that I am in the father and you are, you are in me. And, and, you know, we are one, you know, John 14, 20 and John 17 dives into that a little deeper. And we've covered that because we've been going through the gospel of John in, in this uh, night owl Bible study. So my, my friend, my friend, pastor of Elevation Church in Green Bay, he often says, uh, Ryan Kibbe, I gotta say his name. <laughs> he often says, you hear God better than you think you do. And that's true. I heard a story about one, another a friend uh, today who was like, do I hear God's voice? I don't know. I don't know if I hear his voice. I'm like, yes, you do. We all do way better than we think. Especially, of course, if you're a Christian, you hear his voice. Now, some, some people very sadly, oh, it's so depressing. I don't even want to mention it. But they say, oh, yeah, whenever you hear conviction of your sin, that's when you know you hear God's voice, you know. I'm like, no, it's so much more than that. That's, that, by the way, if, if we do ever feel condemned or like shamed and stuff, that's not, that's not from God. He, he is very gentle with us when it comes to sin. And in fact, I keep getting reminded, you know, uh, by him that he holds no records of wrongs. He would have you go to the mirror because the, the hardest part is you forgiving yourself if you have sinned, right? Um, the hardest part is forgiving yourself. He, he would have you go to the mirror, look yourself in the mirror and say, I forgive you and I receive your forgiveness. Just say it over and over again until you're crying, okay? Until you've, you've got that forgiveness. Jesus Christ forgives you. Okay, first of all, as his representative, according to John 20, 23, I forgive you in the name of Jesus for your sin. I am a priest in the holy order of Melchizedek as Christ is. I am a priest of God and I absolve you of your sins. I forgive you, whoever's watching. Okay, I forgive you. You're forgiven of all your sins. That's what Jesus' blood on the cross is all about. And you get to agree with that. You get to come into agreement with that. And let me give you, paint you this beautiful picture that I was shown in, in my vision, that you are a cell in the body of Christ. You are a cell and, and, and his blood comes and nourishes you with life. What else does the blood function as? The cell, it discharges the crap into the blood to be taken away and dealt with. Taken to the liver, taken to the bladder and urinated out in the toilet bowl of the universe. Okay. That's what confession of sin is all about. You get to confess your sin. You get to discharge your crap into the blood and receive the life. And this happens moment by moment. It's, it's a continual interface with the blood of Jesus. It's not like, oh, it's been two weeks since my last confession. I better go and get that dealt with. Well, guess what? They had a system in, in Israel where it was once a year <laughs> you got that dealt with. No, it's not like that. It's every moment you are nourished by the life-giving blood of Jesus. You're discharging your crap as you agree with him. About, oh, that was really dumb. Why did I do that? Oh my gosh. You discharge it. You agree with Jesus about it. It's done. It's dealt with. It's gone. It's gone. As far as the East is from the West, so far has he removed our sins from us. Okay. Oh my goodness. This is so beautiful, isn't it? This is so beautiful. Congratulations on discovering you uh, too are a Christian mystic. You know, because of the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ through his incarnation, his death and resurrection, the entire cosmos, the entirety of the cosmos has been wrapped up into mystical union with God. That's what Romans 6 unpacks for us. If you want to check that out, you know, we, you know, if he died, we, we died with him. You know, he didn't die just for us. He died as us. Okay. Cause we're wrapped up into him and, uh, uh, all the pre-Christians out there, they're just ones who haven't, you know, received the life of the blood that's surrounding them. That's baptized them. They're already immersed and baptized in the blood of Jesus, all they got to do is just receive it and discharge their crap and receive that new life, okay? And <laughs> come into the kingdom of Christ. 
It's wonderful. It's beautiful. I talked recently, the last episode, we talked about listening prayer, how we, you know, you can pray, Father, what's on your heart? And he shares stuff with you. By the way, on Monday, I did that uh, on my way to one of my concerts. Um, I, I, I pray to Father, what's on your heart? I was just asking kind of for a prophetic word from the Father to me. And, you know, I'm not going to share it with you. That's just way too precious to divulge to the internet, right? But it made me cry. I was crying. And he was affirming me and, and building vision and future and hope and, and life in, into me and aff affirming me, affirming me and, and appointing me. And it was just all kinds of awesomeness. It was wonderful. Wonderful. And you can do that too. You can enjoy a rich and deep friendship with God. With God. Uh, here's a verse for you. Um, my favorite verse in the Bible. Okay. When I when I read this at boom, this is where it's at for me. Okay. Romans 5:11 in the New Living Translation. I, I am very fond of the New Living Translation. Got to give it some props. I love it. This is what it says, Romans 5, 11. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. And for me, that's the bottom line of what a Christian mystic is. You are a friend of God. You're someone that he confides in. You're his friend. He shares secrets with you, mysterion, right? And this is what Jesus says. He he shares his secrets with those who come into relationship with him, who follow him, with his friends. Right? He says, I no longer call you servants, for a servant doesn't know his master's business, but I call you friends because I've divulged everything to you, my friends. And he says, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. He's commanded us to love one another. Okay? Us loving one another means we're his friends. Okay, so, um, you know, Jesus did make the distinction between I don't pray for the world. No, I pray for the ones you gave me, Father, right? And I'm I'm beginning to wonder if it's, it's he's just not upping the ante and it's just like extending, oh, he's giving me them too and them and them and them and oh, oh who, who isn't? My question is, who isn't? the father giving to Jesus. And sadly, a lot of you might, might look at this whole, you might be brainwashed into thinking that this whole salvation thing only pertains to this life. And once you're dead, oh, you're, it's, it's finito. You're, you're, you're toast. If you haven't accepted Christ in this lifetime, you know, it's hell, right? Well, many of you are, are experiencing a hell in this life that Jesus came to set you free from and to bring you to life. You're, you're already dead. Um, in your sins and you need to, to come to life, you know, by receiving his blood and discharging the crap, you know, take it away, Jesus. He's washing you with the water of his word, the living water of the blood, because the life is in the blood. It's living water, the blood, Jesus. Whew. Yes. So pretty amazing, awesome stuff. I'm going to check in with the comments here. Sorry, I've kind of been on a different page here. Hazel, so good to see you on here. All right. Yeah, we're, we're just diving into this. By the way, if any of you want to connect to my Christian Music Mystic, Christian Mystic Community page, please do so. Um, there's links in the description. And if and I also put in like this, uh, if you want to support uh, what, what I'm doing and stuff, um, and our music ministry in particular, my nursing home ministry, all of it. Sozo talk radio, it's all kind of wrapped up into this. It's on Patreon page. So you can do that as well. And, uh, there's other links too. Um, yeah, I don't actually put this up for download <laughs> on Sozo talk radio. There's one up there for download, uh, chapter 10, which was really a powerful, it was a powerful episode for me. I think I even cried. Um, that one uh, really touched uh, something deep, you know, in me. And just uh, <laughs> the Lord really spoke to me, too, about affirming me with, uh, with, you know, sometimes Jesus needs to trump a scripture that condemns you. You know, you feel condemned by a scripture. This is Satan's favorite game to play. 
Like what scripture can I, can I misconstrue or apply to you to condemn you, right? He does it. Even Peter had a scripture that condemned him, right? Whoever denies me before men, I will deny him before my, the holy angels and my father. Well, Peter denied him three times. He had a scripture that condemned him. And he, he, he pretty much felt that hardcore. And that's why he went off to, he's like, I'm going fishing. I, I can't, I can't take the weight of this anymore. I'm going fishing, you know? And Jesus chases him down to see a Galilee. Hey, have you caught any fish? You know, he, he shouts from shore with a joyful beaming smile. And they're like, no, nothing, nothing, you know, well, cast it on the other side. Hmm, where have I heard that one before? So they do. And, and they pull in 153 large fish and a miracle is the net isn't even broken. That's, and, and by the way, um, 153 is gematria, Greek gematria for Ani Elohim. I learned that. It's pretty cool. Um, Ani Elohim means I am Elohim. And guess what? Jesus says you are Elohim. Elohim is God's plural. God's plural. We have been wrapped up into the divine life. Okay. I hope this doesn't shock anybody too much. This is, got, this is actually the key to the next great awakening, what I'm sharing with you. For people to understand this, it helps to move forward into the, the Christ life and living out of the Christ life and uh, prevents a lot of shock when he takes you into heaven and you realize we're one. Oh my gosh, you're me. I'm you. Where does one begin and the other stop? Nobody knows. We're so one with Jesus Christ himself and we're one with a host of heaven. We're one with each other. Oh my gosh. It's a fractal of the soul of God talking to a fractal of the soul of God right now. Okay. This is how amazing it is and brilliant and beautiful. And um, that's one of the big secrets of the kingdom of God. Big secrets. So don't tell anybody. Okay. Um, or you can as the, as the Lord leads. <laughs> Good evening and shalom, Hazel. Hazel is a, a, a sister in the Lord in the Philippines, who's been tracking with us. Thank you for tuning in. Um, she says the encounter changed him big time, changed him into a new being. And she's referencing Paul. When Paul encountered Jesus, yes, indeed, transformed by the, by meeting Jesus and realizing, oh my gosh, you don't hold any of my sins. I killed Christians and you don't hold any sins against me. Oh my gosh. I am loved this much. Oh my gosh. Then the love was just cascading and crashing over him as the scales fell from his eyes. This happened three days later. He stood in shock for three days and then he got a major revelation about the Christ life. All this stuff I'm talking about, Paul was in it. He being in Christ is one of the favorite things he talks about. This is what being a Christian mystic is all about. Being in Christ, living out of him. It's, and that's why they call us Christians, because we're all a bunch of little Christs. That's what Christian means, little Christ. You are little Christ. I am a little Christ. Yep. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. That's pretty cool, huh? And yes, historically, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh and Jesus is Lord. Not only is he Lord Adonai, which means master and commander and husband, boss, um, you know, Lord, that understanding of it. But he is Lord, the I am. That's that's by, basically when you see in scriptures, uh, Lord, all caps, that's referencing his name, Jehovah, I am. And, and one of, interestingly, here's, here's, a, here's an, a neat little thing. One of the names of the I am is uh, uh, the Lord of hosts, right? You've heard that? Basically, it is, it is, it, it's spelled out, if you, if, you, if you understand it, I am the host. He is the host of heaven. He is you and me and 
because we're all one. We're all expressions of the Christ life. We're all expressions of God. How brilliant is that? Yep. And, okay. God is speaking to us all the time, Hazel comments. Yes, indeed. He is. Jesus is awesome. He is a great friend and teacher, all in all. The Bible says, the Bible says that you will all, you will all be taught by God. Okay. And um, Jesus says, you have one teacher. He says, call no man teacher. You have one teacher, the Christ. And so when Jesus, when I went to heaven and he was appointing some of the hosts of heaven to be my teachers, I I, share, I, I quoted the, that back to him. I said, but Jesus, you said, um, I'll have one teacher, the Christ. And he says, Daniel, but don't you see? I inhabit this one. I in, I animate this one. I inhabit you, you know? So, so essentially, um, yeah, we'll all be taught by God and it's going to come through each other, not a lot, oftentimes, you know, it'll be, it'll come through the, the angels, the host of heaven who I've been in, interacting with uh, more. And I, and I, and I really want to nurture just being, being well attuned to, to hearing um, the Lord's voice, well attuned to hearing an, the angels that speak to me, the host of heaven, um, all the more we need to be well attuned. How do we do that? We marinate our minds in scripture, the word of God. And, and I'd start with the gospel of John. Just keep running it over, CD in your car. Uh, you got Bible apps on your phones, okay? And there's no excuse. Everybody's got a Bible. Marinate your minds. Let, let there's people will read it to you on the Bible apps. It's so cool. It's so cool. And you can choose all these different translations. I love the NLT, the, NLT, the New Living Translation. I love, um, you know, New King James Version in my car. I've got it on CD going all the time. Just loop, you know, marinating your minds in scripture, okay? That's how you stay well attuned to hearing from God. Yes. And, and he is all in all. I liked how you say that because God is all and in you all. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. Isn't that shocking? Isn't that shocking? Christ is all and in you all. God is all and in all. He's the all in all. Like, wow. You know, I was like, I was walking out and, um, okay. Hazel says, I love the voiceovers. It's like listening to Bible stories when I was a kid. Yes, exactly. Um, listening to the Bible on, um, on CD and stuff and, on your Bible apps, on your phones, do that, okay? How, how's another way we can nurture hearing the voice of God in prayer? Just getting quiet, getting quiet, practicing the presence of God, you know? Um, contemplation is a, is a fancy word for it. That's a fun word, isn't it? Contemplation. <laughs> I'd like to do more uh, more conversation about that at some point. But you get quiet. I mean, uh, the world would call it, call it meditation, you know? Like quiet, quiet this, because it's racing all the time. Get it quiet enough to where you're going to hear the still small voice. You got to quiet down. Be still and know that I am God, right? Be still. We got we to get still. And I've, I've been doing that. And that's when I... That's when I hear and have marvelous interactions with the Lord and downloads of, of, of wisdom and revelation. Uh, it's really awesome. It's really awesome. Uh, just connecting with the Lord in that way. And uh, there's so much more to come. So much more to come, guys. I'll tell you a story. I won't, I'm not going to name any names, but I had a friend who told me the other day, because um, we've been talking, and he said, he said, um, yeah, I was downstairs praying and all of a sudden I'm in my, my son's house, you know, like he, uh, spirit traveled to his son's house and it was dark there. So he opened this door to welcome angels in and he knew their names and, uh, he talked with them, uh, like they were friends, you know, cause we are friends. You're going to realize, oh my gosh, I know you, you know, 
we've been friends forever, you know? Do you think that you just started in this incarnation? No. <laughs> we have had pre-mortal lives, many of them, you know, probably in different scenarios and different, you know, universes and different planets as, as different beings even, you know, or just hanging out, partying with the Father, you know, swirling about worshiping him and, and just experiencing, you know, God is timeless and we are part of him, right? So we are timeless. We have always existed with the Father and we're, we're a unique expression of that and a unique personality, a, a unique avatar, a unique ego, but we're so much bigger than our ego. We can't get stuck in our ego. We got to get out of our ego. We need to, as Paul says, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. We got to get into the Christ life and live out of him and in connection with all the hosts of heaven who are all connected to the Christ life and living out of him. So this is brilliant, 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 you guys. I'm so excited. It's, it's the most exciting thing in the world to be a Christian. Ooh, I got a lot of good comments on, uh, on YouTube. Thank you all for tuning in. It's awesome to have you here. Awesome to see you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Okay, so tra Travis Bell, he starts on. I'm going back to earlier comments here. Um, love the topic. Thank you for illuminating me to the passion version. Yes, passion, passion translation. It's great. I've been really benefiting from it. And Travis says, uh, not to be funny, but I think God sounds a lot like Bob Ross. Well, in 2011, he did. <laughs> All right, you're hearing the voice of God. That's awesome. I I love hearing hearing the Lord. You know, we can get. And by the way, by the way, when you do meet him, you're gonna realize too that we've been long lost friends. You know, like like this world is this world experience is kind of like getting lost in the woods, you know, and and forgetting who forgetting who we are, you know, it's it's kind of scary and disorienting. But but once you re get reconnected, it's like, oh yes, my my best friend, my best friend, Jesus, yes. You know, so it's it's really wonderful. Firewalker 144. Good to see you on here. The beautiful, glorious gospel of Yeshua. Yes. And I love that you're using his his name. His name Yeshua, Yeshua, at which literally means I am salvation. And that word salvation is so rich. It's so deep. It's also that the Shua is the Hebrew form of, of the Greek word sozo, which is what I named my show, Sozo Talk Radio. So it's all about exploring the depths and the riches of the, the abundant life and the rich salvation that Jesus is. And that Jesus, that we get to partake in him and with him and being plugged into the Christ life and being nourished by the, the living waters that flow from the throne of the Father, the heart, the rivers of living water, the blood flowing from his throne, nourishing all the cells in the body with love and faithfulness, which is the very essence and nature of the universe the universe, the one word, which is Christ himself, the whole, uh, I had a friend tell me this other, this the other day that there's been prophetic revelation that the universe itself, all the stars out there and the galaxies and everything is in the shape of a man, the Christ. Now, how, how amazing is that? It's like on this macro scale picture, like all these, all the cells, you know, the stars, you know, <laughs> and, pl and planets and things. And there are beings that live on them too and having experiences, spiritual experiences. They don't have to be uh, mortals like us to, to be able to live on a star or live on the moon. You know, there's beings that live on the moon. There's beings that live on Mars. And C.S. Lewis, by the way, he was tapped in. He was plugged into this stuff. He saw what I saw um, because... I, I once opened up a C.S. Lewis book. This was so cool. I once opened up a C.S. Lewis book right in the middle of Magician's Nephew, and I saw about these rings of power and these pools that go that were portals to different worlds, different... <laughs> wow, you have no idea all the, the worlds that, that God's got going on. And, 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 and so this is what I saw um, when I was introduced to the host of heaven. Each one of them were connected to their own pool, their own portal, 
leading to worlds, some of which were in our own human history I was shown, some of which were leading to, to other universes, some of which were leading to other planets. You know, and some of some of these beings, the hosts of heaven, they're not, uh, you know, they're of extraterrestrial origin. It's it's so cool. We get to be, uh, it's like Star Wars, kind of. <laughs> it's kind of cool. So um, I love it. I love I love how expanded this is. You know, you know that Christianity seemed so boring to me as a child, so incredibly boring. I'm like going to church and, and, and thinking, why would anybody do this to themselves? Go to these boring places to hear these boring messages, to get put to sleep by all these boring pastors who don't, frankly, don't have a clue about the Christ life. Some of them, some of them do. So until I met a Sunday school teacher who was asked about aliens and she says, well, it could be with kind of like a glint in her eye. I'm like, I'm wondering how plugged in she was. How pl how much does she know? And, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Christianity became this glorious option for me. I'm like, whoa, Christianity doesn't have to be boring. There can be aliens. We don't have to, you know, <laughs> be so confined and rigid in our, in our worldviews. We can be expanded. And it was the first kind of expansion moment for me. Um, there in, with that amazing Sunday school teacher years ago. So it's true. It's true, folks. Jesus is God. I love that. I love that. He is indeed. He is Lord and he has come in the flesh just in case you're testing the spirits. Okay. This one's good. <laughs> this one knows what's up. All right. Oh, Travis, you said I had a vision of the fractal situation looking like a multi-diamond sphere of light now that's just brilliant because it talks about the the seven spirits of god the seven facets right the fractals uh oh my gosh there there are fractals of 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 god that that would blow our minds and and he's gentle with us in his revelation, he's like, okay, I can I can only give you what you can handle. So like, I'm always praying like, Lord, how can I handle more? Will you increase my ability to handle more of these things that you want to reveal? Because Jesus, remember what he said to Nicodemus in John chapter three? He says, if I tell you of earthly things and you don't believe me, how will you believe me if I tell you of heavenly things? And I'm like, I'm like, what kind of things? What kind of things? You know, aren't you? Aren't you like that? We need to be like that. Children, eager to like, and it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. To give you, it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He's just waiting for you to wake up. He's waiting for you to be ready to say, yes, humble yourselves. And here, it, frankly, a lot of what you know is standing in the way of ever experiencing the kingdom of God. We need to humble ourselves and become like little children who know nothing. They're teachable. They're humble. They're dependent. You know, we're about to ex experience Independence Day here in America, right? We have pride ourselves on our independence. But Jesus prided himself in his dependence on the Father. And he says, look at these little children. You must become like them or you will never enter the kingdom of God, of the Christ life, living out of him living out of him, living as him, as he is, so are we in this world. Ring a bell. Scripture. Okay. First John. Oh, guys, this is so exciting. It's the most exciting thing in the world to be, be a Christian. Okay. So we got some more comments here. I'm just going through some of these awesome comments. Thank you all for this. Thank you all for this. This is, this is kind of exciting to have so much cool conversation happening here. So Paul heard the word of God. That's when he knew who Jesus was. Yes, indeed. Christian means disciple of Christ. It means little Christ, literally. And Lord means master, too. Yes, master, husband, um, master and commander. I like that. Master and commander. And he's love. You, got, you have love for a boss. <laughs> love himself is your boss. Like, how cool is that? How easy is that to surrender and submit to the Lord who is love. Yes, sign me up. I'm I'm surrendering all to love. 
We can say, we can say that wholeheartedly, knowing who he is. Uh, all right, we got a prophetic guy in the house. Okay, it comes through the spirit of Jesus, yes, who which is the spirit of God. God needs to open our ears to the word of God. Yes, indeed. He's speaking to believers in Christ who has Christ in them all in all. Yes, indeed. Joseph, you kind of know, know, know what's up. But what I was saying earlier, it's what we know that stands in our way. I have I have some some friends. Um, well, and other people I know. Uh, we run into them all the time, right? Who who just are stuck in their heads, even with theology. You know, and it, and it's fearful theology. Like, like you gotta um, get all your theological ducks in a row, right? And uh, and and sign your name to the bottom of those most perfectly well crafted creed. It's not about that, guys. It's about coming into relationship with the one who is perfect theology, who is love, and and getting letting your mind get reworked. Okay, transformed, renewing your mind transformed and and sometimes it's going to be the most shocking devastating thing like paul he sat there for three days and he didn't eat or drink he just stood there stupefied like oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh overwhelmed okay and daniel the prophet sitting by when he had his encounter he, he like i don't know i think he was like if I'm remembering correctly, there was some two week stretch where he just sat by a river and just like dumbfounded, like, ah, uh, like, okay. Now the Lord has prepped me for a long time to even have the experience that I did. And when I had it, it was most shocking. And I struggled with doubt through the whole thing. It was just crazy. It was, I mean, it was crazy, wonderful. But, but yeah, this is what, this is what's in store for you. And so I'm I'm here to kind of like help prep you for your awakening, help prep you for experiencing the kingdom of Christ for yourself and see what I saw. Many of you will see similar things. I had a, a friend shown that Christ ascended to become all these cells, right? Um, and then another friend who said, yeah, that that we're all that we're all observation points of God right? That's how he phrased it. Well, my vision put the two together. The cells are observation points. Remember that the living creature that is full of eyes all around and within, that's all the cells of the body of Christ. There's billions and trillions of them, and they're all eyes. They're observation points, excuse me. They're observation points, and they, and they, have, they have portals to their own matrix of experience, like I'm looking around in my matrix right now. This is all God too. This matrix is made out of the substance of him and me. <laughs> I, I went for a walk one day in the woods recently and, and, and the angels said, look around you, Daniel. This is all you. I'm like, whoa, okay. This is how miracles start to happen. This is this is how you understand. You're tapping into the, the deeper truths here of like who we are. You know who Christ is and who we are in him and as him. Okay? So this is once we start to believe this stuff is when the miracles, unusual signs and miracles occur. All right. Okay. Scrolling through some more of this comments. Thanks you guys for joining me. This is kind of an exciting one for me talking about what a Christian mystic is. Join the community page if, you, if you'd like. If, it's in the, the link in the description um, of this video. Um, it's uh, facebook.com the mystical slash the mystical Christian. So it's, it's fun. It's fun. Okay. Oh, wow. Fireworker144. I passed through the living creature during ascensions at times through all the eyes. Yes, Firewalker, you've seen it too. And I, I've met I've met many others, and I know many others who have experienced this awakening already, and they've seen the same thing. They're also called the cloud of witnesses. Oh, wow. 
So Joseph saw Jesus crucified in a vision on January 9th of 2011 after you called on his name for mercy. Wow, Joseph, that's amazing. It's amazing to hear that. And by the way, Roger, you, you, you say you've seen this stuff in dreams, right? This is how it's always happened for me. I've been coached and see these th things in dreams for years. This recently, a, a month ago, was my first real open vision of that. You know, there's there's been like a few other open visions. A lot of it was nasty stuff. Like I was seeing demons. I was seeing like a serpent and dragon in my living room. I was seeing a ginormous giant of, of despair out my back door. You know, like I'm seeing these kinds of things. Like, like this, I've seen bats, like, you know, like like spiritual bats flying through the room that, that were tormenting us and causing discord and strife. You know, Joseph, I believe you. I believe your testimony. You saw the crucified Jesus in a vision in 2011. I believe it. I actually had a vision of the rapture in um, in 2014 in January, and that that uh, for me for me uh, really uh, changed my life because before that I had such doubts as to whether I would even go to heaven, like uh, whether I would even be raptured. You know, I I, I honestly had these doubts and you know whenever i lost my wife in a grocery store i'm like oh no she got raptured and i'm 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 staying stuck here you know and it happened a couple of other times i'm like oh no you know i had such a fear of that and then and then the lord gave me a, a dream in which uh i was raptured i was like uh, i'll tell you really cool really quickly um it started with all these storms all this lightning flashing you know and the, but there's no rain and so we were expecting the rain to come and i was at a family camp at the time and uh, there's all these, you know, atriums or what I don't even know how you call it, like buildings without walls, you know, like just the roof and, you know, picnic tables and underneath, set up underneath. And and we, we went under these, you know, expecting the rain to come. And my, my mother-in-law, Cindy, was standing out there in the field and she's just looking up in awe. She's like, oh, wow. And then all of a sudden, guess what happened? Boom, a lightning bolt hits her, but it doesn't but it remains, it stays on her, it latches on and it lights her up and she's like glowing blue. And, and it, you should see this, this, this amazing lightning, uh, like an umbilical cord, you know, whatever thing. I don't know, it's kind of, kind of how I thought of it afterwards. It's like wispy blue, it's just so, so beautiful. And she started ascending. Well, just after that, I'm starting to ascend with with my wife, and I and I'm talking to my wife. I'm, I'm in the air. I'm like, I get to come too, and I'm just like overjoyed, you know. I get to come too, yay, you know. And I get up in, into these these spaceships. They were spaceships. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool stuff. And there were uh, as soon as I got up into the spaceship, I had. A fear. Oh no, they're going to realize their mistake by taking me, and I'm going to fall. Right? <laughs> so paranoid. <laughs> I had such fear. And uh, so what I did is I grabbed onto my little Emma's leg. She's like a baby at the time. I'm like, well, she's not going anywhere. You know, in my fear, I'm I'm grabbing grabbing her leg. And then when I, once I realized my mistake, like, no, you're really you're really here. This grace is for you too, Daniel. Um, I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, Emma, that I did that, um, you know. And then I looked and I, I saw there's there's angels here, and 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 they they're providing they're providing all these uh, these Bibles for us to to read, um, to to you know they're provided for our comfort, right? And in all of our favorite translations, whatever favorite translation, it was there, okay. And I looked and I'm looking through the pile of Bibles, you know, for for my favorite New Living Translation. At the time, uh, the passion translation is growing on me. But I saw one and it says containing extra Catholic content on the cover, you know, you know, so containing the, the Apocrypha as well. So uh, it was cool. Then I then I looked over, I saw a pastor. I saw my mom there. I saw a pastor. Yeah, my mom just say that in passing. Right. That was cool, too. A pastor. But I, I uh, he he got my attention and he says, Daniel. What's your past? And I said, my past is forgiven and forgotten. And I just said it. And the, the joy, this is the most incredible joy I've ever felt in my whole life, just bursting out of me. 
And then he says, what's your future? And I say, I have a glorious future in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I woke up just kind of like vibrating with the Holy Spirit, just like, whoa, it was awesome. So yes, God speaks to us in dreams. And, th and that is how that he's coaching you towards your awakening. There are angels instructing you in your sleep as you dream, coaching the dullard, okay? The dullard, we are dullards. That's what they, that's, that was the nickname they gave me. And uh, um, because, because what they need for us to know is that we know nothing. We know nothing. We, what our job is, is to be present, to participate and observe and learn. Okay, we're babies. Do you think that babies should be open up and pontificating? This is this is why I, I keep saying that it's what you know that's standing you standing in the way of your own awakening. Okay, it's standing in the way of your awakening. Um, what what you think you know, because really the the truth is Jesus Christ, the person. Jesus Christ, the person, he is the way, the truth in the life and the truth will set you free. It's in experientially knowing him, experientially. And we must become like little children. We must humble ourselves and become teachable. Our pride is standing in the way, Joseph. Yes, you're right. Okay. We are going over to comments on Facebook. Wow, exactly my prayer, expanding the capacity to receive the full knowledge of your being, the full knowledge of your being, all that I need to understand and know and also will share. Yes, profound comment by Hazel from the Philippines, which I used to call Hazel. <laughs> and so I feel like, Okay, so it's cool to be connecting with so many other Christian mystics. We're going to get back to that briefly, okay? This is going to be kind of a, a longer episode. Encounters with Jesus. And if any of you don't like what I'm saying, you don't have to listen, okay? Bye-bye, right? You don't have to stick around. You can block me on Facebook, unsubscribe from YouTube. Go ahead. I am looking for people whose hearts are open to receive revelation from God and to join me in this great awakening. And I'm going to risk it all because I know there's going to be haters out there. There's going to be people who tar and feather you and cast out your name as evil. Hmm, where have I heard that before? Right? That's going to happen. Uh, anybody who desires to live godly, like God, Okay, will suffer persecution. They will cast out your name as evil and they'll they'll kill you and think they're doing God a service. That's what we covered in John chapter 16. Okay, that's going to happen. It's happening in certain parts of the world. I don't know what it, their fascination is with the beheading thing. Okay, but that's happening. Uh, beheading seems to be very uh, prominent. I don't know. It must be very satanic. Like this is, Satan's favorite way of of killing people with behead them. Yes, you know, I was researching um, the samurai of the 16th century, and they would <laughs> they would slaughter like a hundred thousand hundred thousand people and anybody of significance. They you know to capture their mojo, they would behead them, decorate their faces, and put them all in their rooms and just you know sleep with them. Present, so crazy, 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 crazy. Well, the Lord is healing this world. Okay, it's not going to be so crazy and hell-like anymore because the rock that was cut out without human hands is expanding to fill the whole earth. The little leaven of the kingdom of God has been put in this world and it is growing and it's leavening the whole lump until this is going to look like heaven folks you know god has brought the earth so close to his heart you know and that and that's why things are heating up 
Um, people are experiencing the the birth pangs and the transition, which is the most painful part. And and the scariest part is, you know, you, f you feel your ego is kicking and screaming, thinking it's going to die or something. Well, there's part of the ego that dies. It's the pride part. Um, your self-awareness doesn't die at all. That's that's fine. It's your personality. And God loves that. He treasures that. He protects that. And even if you did explode into a million pieces, he'll put you back together wholer than ever. You know, and sometimes experiencing his love in its intensity. Yeah, it's like that. It'll feel that way. It'll feel like I'm going to explode into a million pieces when you experience the infinite love of God. And I, I pray for that. I pray for that. And I, and, and uh, there's a guy named Georgian, but <laughs> Georgian uh, Banov. He uh, has a beautiful, wonderful testimony. I, I've wanted to interview him on Sozo Talk Radio before. Um, but where where he had an open vision into the throne room of God um, when he first got saved, and and he got he got the attention of Papa on his throne, and a lightning bolt came out and boom hit him and just lit him up, and he's just like. Ah, and his ego, his pride probably, and whatever else, the self-will was just like totally rebelling against what was happening and it felt like he was on fire. And that's really what hell is. It's an experience of the love of God that, you're, that your pride is resisting the love of God. That's what hell is, okay? And, and, and so Georgian, he's saved, you know, he's saved, but he's still, you know, all of us will be salted with fire, okay? But it's a purifying fire. It's a purifying fire, removing the impurities of pride and lust and boom, all this stuff has to go. We discard it into the blood and it gets carried away, right? Dealt with. So he he runs out of the room where he's, <laughs> he's having this vision, uh, this experience. We just got struck by a lightning bolt from the Father. I pray for that. I'm like, Lord, strike me with a lightning bolt from the throne. There's lightning bolts coming off of the throne. Boom, boom, boom. And it's a gift to be struck by one of these. It's a gift. And I want that. I want that. Um, and so he's running, screaming. He's like, I'm on fire. Ah, you know, and he sees a puddle. He sees a puddle in the path and he jumps into it. <laughs> no relief whatsoever. The guy is just brilliant, filled with the father's love. He's just brilliant i love georgian banoff if you if you catch anything on youtube by him you can ch check him out okay ah yes it's brilliant i love being a christian mystic don't you once again i, I invite you to join me on Christ, uh, my christian mystic page it's uh facebook.com slash the mystical christian so we, we already talked about how uh, mystic is a uh, is a, a word used by by the Lord. Um, um, mysterion it literally means secret, mystery, or hidden thing. Um, so some of you are some of you to some of you I am casting pearls to swine. I realize that I realize that, but I'm taking the risk um, of getting mauled by a wild boar. Um, to impart life to somebody because it's going to be a fragrance of life to somebody out there. And I'm going to connect with more of my tribe of Christian mystics, okay? By divulging these secrets, these mysteries, these hidden things. It says in this in the Psalms, Psalm 25, 14. I was meditating on this. This just came to mind one day. I was, I was riding to church and I looked it up. I'm like, yes, this is brilliant. This is it. It says the secret of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he will make them know his covenant. His covenant, his love and faithfulness. He is so committed to his bride. He is so committed to his children. He is co so committed to elements of himself. The Bible says, the Bible says he cannot deny himself. Speaking of you, speaking of me, you know? that we are elements of, we're members of his body, you know? And he, of course, he's faithful. The covenant, the covenant he makes with himself, that he's healing himself. You know, he, Jesus says, you'll quote this proverb to me, physician, heal thyself, all right? And that's what I've been, I've been meditating on that. 
and even praying that, saying, Jesus, heal thyself, you know, <laughs> heal, heal me, heal, heal you, you know, heal thyself. The secret of the Lord, the I am, the secret of the I am is for those who fear him. What does fear him means? It means to reverently, reverently trust in him. It means to reverently trust in him. Yes, we reverence, we bow the knee to love, we bend the knee, we surrender to love. Okay. He shares his secret. He he divulges his secrets with those who fear him, and he will make known his covenant. Cool, huh? William Paul Young says, relationship is full of mystery. I like that quote. Relationship is full of mystery. And that's what we're in. We're plugged into a relationship. And we talked about that earlier with eternal life. The very definition of eternal life is to experientially know in relationship the Father and Jesus Christ, the Son. Jesus says this, and he uses the word... Um, Wait, wait, wait. No, he doesn't in this part. Okay. Um, he says, I no longer call you slaves because a master does not confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I've told you everything the Father has told me. If you do what he commands, you're his friend. Love one another. That's his command. He spells it out a verse later. <laughs> okay. That's from John 15, 12 to 17. I'm actually going to copy and paste that one. I love you guys. I love you guys. You're awesome. Thanks for hanging with me. I know we've been going for like uh, an hour strong now. I get jacked up on this stuff. Oh, yeah. So Hazel says, it's dangerous to the minds that are full of religious mire. We badly need a lot of renewing of minds and embracing the true freedom and with Christ. Oh, Hazel, that's so, so brilliant. I'm going to love that comment. Wait, love, not just like, I'm going to love that one. <laughs> it's not letting me do it. Okay, I'm going to pin that comment. There you go. That was brilliant. And that's, it's so true because the Lord, the Lord saves me from religion and it took hell to do so. I, I would actually, uh, you know how Jesus says, uh, settle matters quickly with your adversary who's taking you to, to court. Do it while you're still in the way with him. So for I tell you, you'll not, you know, if, if you don't, I'll judge you, hand you over the judge, judge will hand you over the officer and you'll be thrown into prison. And I tell you that you'll not get out until you've paid the last penny. And uh, that's what happened to me. And by the way, the, Jesus has the prerogative to trump that word, just like he trumped the word. Um to Peter about, you know, I will deny you before my angels and father if you deny me. Well, he trumped that word. He he spoke over it and a, a mercy triumphing over judgment. So even if you've been thrown into prison like I was, and I didn't I didn't get out until I paid the last penny. And that's 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 where we get the idea or the whole notion of the the seven years of tribulation, because I was in there uh, for I was in prison for seven years in, in hell. My soul was locked up in hell for seven years. And it was despair. It was hopelessness. There wasn't a, a ray of light. But I had a prophecy. I had a prophecy that I got um, when I was a child that the light would come. The light would come. Um, so I knew there was light to come, even in the midst of my profound darkness while in hell. Hell is really spiritual blindness. Hell is rejecting the revelation of God. You, you plunge yourself into hell when you reject the revelation of God, when you shut it down. And religion will do that every time. In fact, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be so bold as to say that the new age, just like Jesus says, the prostitutes and the sinners are closer to the kingdom of God than you Pharisees. I'm going to say the new age is closer to the kingdom of God than you Christians. You know, sometimes, you know, and then I'm speaking to the unaway Christians, the still stuck in their pride, stubborn pride, religio religiosity um, Christians. 
So the Lord's actually sending me to the new age people, to the tribe, to that tribe. And uh, he told me, he told me, he says, a lot of Christians are going to think that you abandon me because of it, because I'm going to the new age to reach them because he loves them. And he's about to give them a big giant hug. And you're going to see so many new age people get this way before a lot of Christians do. Because Christians, a lot of them need a radical paradigm shift, whereas new age just need a tweak. You know, they've been talking about Christ consciousness for years. They are, they're already plugged into a lot of this, this knowledge, okay? They just need to submit to the one who has love. They just need to know his name and his story, Jesus, okay? And submit to that. But Christians, they've been shutting down revelation and confining themselves in little boxes for years, for years. It's, that's how religion's always been. You know, unless they get an awakening and a revival, and then half the church it's, doesn't like it. You know, typically only half the church goes with any kind of move of God anyway, right? Oh, you're moving God? No, thanks. We'll stay here. This, this Moses, we we tr we trust, but but you know, who are you? You know, like that's whole that whole thing, the whole thing that happened to Pharisees and Jew Jewish people. This is happening again with the next great awakening. It's going to cause a huge rift in the body of Christ. Right down the middle. You better believe it. Which side are you going to land on? Are you going to open yourself up to the revelation of Christ? Or shut her down? Okay? And remain in hell. Because that's what spiritual blindness is. This is serious. And I'm laying it on the line here. <sighs> so Hazel says, this is so true. But embracing the truth and freedom where my embracing the truth and freedom where my mind was blown is kind of like being nuked <laughs> and then coming alive. <laughs> yes, it's true. Oh my gosh. It felt that way to me. So I'm trying to be, I you know what? Maybe I'm not very gentle. Maybe I haven't been very gentle in the way I've been kind of just laying it all out there for you guys. Um, because there's some of the some people who are who are just yeah, getting nuked. Their whole worldview is just being shattered by the revelation of who Christ truly is and who we are in him and as him. Thank you, Hazel, for your comments. All right. I'm going to get back to talking about some of this Christian mystic stuff because this is kind of fun. So, yeah. So... Jesus wants us to remain and abide in, in the vine, right? Um, that's getting pl plugged into the Christ life and staying there. You know, and we bear fruit naturally by being plugged into him, by receiving his blood. We're going to naturally, uh, you know, bear fruit. But the kernel has to die, though. The, that pride, we have to, we're going to have to just be humble, teachable. Come to him and say, I'm blind, Jesus. Please open my eyes. Please heal me too. He will. He'll be faithful to do that. He'll forgive you of all your sins. In fact, you, the cross the cross means forgiveness, right? But Jesus says that we must forgive others or we will not be forgiven. That's a, kind of, that's a big deal. It's a big deal. <clears throat> How do we abide in him? How do we remain in him? Well, we meditate on his word. We meditate on his love for us. Pertinent scriptures that have to do with, with his loving us. The Bible says that, that the Father loves us as much as he loves Jesus. Well, that's because we are Jesus. We are Christ in this world. As he is, so are we in this world. Um. He loves us with the same love because we're part of him. We're members of his body and no man ever hated his own flesh. Jesus cannot hate you because you're him. Okay? You're him. That's how he made it. So, you know, he's taken the, the whole role of salvation out of your hands. It's completely out of your hands. You know, It's not about saying a prayer to receive Christ. It's about recognizing the awareness like you're in Christ you're forgiven it's it's the declaration of the good news that you receive oh and waking up to it oh and we're at certain 
you know, a lot of us are at certain stages and levels of this waking upness, you know, to how it really is and to how loved we are. You know, they just preach the good news. You're forgiven. And all your sins were paid for at the cross, as far as east and from the west. And then and then just the unfolding revelation, too, of, of all that I've been talking about, you know, which is uh, straight from scripture. The primary, uh, this is one of my favorite things to say, is that uh, the primary responsibility of every human being is just to let God love you. Let him love you. Let him just nourish you with that unconditional, infinite love. Day after day, his faithfulness to you, his faithful love. He loves you perfectly. He cannot love you more than he loves you right now. And there's nothing you can do that can make him love you any less. There's nothing that you can do that make, can make him love you any more either. This frees you completely from this whole performance mentality. Yes, you can go fishing. And he's perfectly as well pleased with you going fishing as going to preach the gospel, okay? You do, however, get to participate with him. And you really shouldn't do ministry until, until that's the case, until you're resting um, in the, the Sabbath rest, right? That Sabbath rest of Hebrews 4, coming into the Christ life, living out of that. That's when true ministry can happen. That's when the, the it has mojo of the life of Christ, right? But you can still do this when you're in the womb of the matrix. You're just as a viable life as a baby in the womb of the matrix before you've been born again into the kingdom of the Christ life. Okay? You're just as a viable life. And you can still minister out of that too um, to all the other babies, <laughs> who many of which are still in the womb of the matrix and haven't been born again yet. I think I am going to run with that metaphor. Of Jesus because honestly that's how it was I was born again a month ago into the kingdom of the Christ life I'm not making a doctrine out of that I'm, I'll, I'll try not to but and it felt like I was raptured too that's what the rapture is all about it's coming into the and coming into heaven you know and living out of heaven the kingdom has come the kingdom of God is here boom Isn't that amazing that God loves you as much as he loves Jesus? That's John 17. Okay. Go check that out. All right. So here, here's where Jesus, finally, I come across the verse <laughs> where, where uh, Jesus uses the word mysterion from which, from which we get uh, mystic mysticism and mystery um, it's the secrets of the kingdom of God. Okay. He says, you are permitted to understand the secret, the mysteria of the kingdom of God. But I use parables for everything I say to outsiders. And unfortunately with a broadcast like this, I'm going to be speaking to outsiders. And that's where Jesus warns you. He says, don't throw your pearls to pigs. I'm sorry. I'm doing that. I'm throwing my pearls to some pigs. Um, there's probably some of you that are, that fit that case. Um, I've always been that way. I've, you know, instead of like telling stories to convey the point, like C.S. Lewis did, right? C.S. Lewis was plugged into the Christ life. He actually probably took, uh, spirit travels to other planets and time travels to see the creation and uh, knew about the extraterrestrial life and um, all the, the portals to different worlds, you know, the pools, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, he, he was in on it. He knew. He knew the secrets of the mystery of God. But he cloaked it in parables. And maybe that's where I should go to uh, start doing that. But the time is short, too. The time is very short. This awakening is happening. We're right on the edge of it, the cusp of it. 2020 is where the, the prophet Bob Jones said from 2020 to 2030 is when the awakening will be in full. And, and, he talk, and they talked about even, um, who was it? Another guy, another prophet. Hopefully I can remember his name. But he talked about waves of the, the coming movement of God. It's going to come to the church first and divide it down the middle. And then a huge tidal wave is coming after that. 
that's going to sweep the world. You know, see, judgment's going to come. That washing is going to come to the, the body of Christ first. He's going to wake up those who want to, and about half of them will probably, they're the outsiders, right? They really are the outsiders. But half of them will be woken up to be ministers and servants and sons of God for when the whole revelation just comes and across the whole earth, right? And a lot of those, um, a lot of those sons of God are going to be revealed in the New Age movement. They're going to be New Age followers of Jesus. And I, I would honestly say that's kind of, it's kind of where I see myself landing to, like a New Age follower of Jesus. I don't. I'm not saying I ascribe to the New Age uh, movement. I ascribe to Jesus Christ. But He is bringing a New Age. Get it? We're, we're actually even astrologically coming into the age of Aquarius. You know, we're on the cusp of that, transitioning into that. And that's 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 Christ in the heavens. That's the clock, the clock of the heavens, the signs in the heavens <laughs> that Christ put there. You know? So it's it's okay to be a Christian astrologer <laughs> in the sense that you understand the gospel in the stars. Right? I'm gonna actually be interviewing somebody about that on uh, Sozo Talk Radio. It's amazing. Uh, God invites us. He's inviting us. He's saying, ask me and I will tell you remarkable secrets that you that you don't know about. Things to come. Right? Right? So are you asking? Are you one of those that's going to be, be childlike and humble and, and lay aside uh, all your the arrogant pride and, and even, even some, I don't know, I don't know, some theologies that are keeping you from the Jesus Christ is perfect theology. It's not, it's not, oh, all the things that we've hammered out about him. No, you get to meet him. He is perfect theology and he knows what he's about and he'll share what he's about with you. If you become like a little child. Okay. So I know I'm, I'm hammering that so, so hard, but there's probably somebody who needs to hear it. It's probably somebody who needs to hear it. Ah, oh, yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, we're going to wrap this up because that was that was a pretty uh, thorough, in-depth, what a Christian mystic is all about. The Bible isn't enough. Okay? The Bible introduces us to the one who the Bible is about. So we actually have to meet him and come into him and experience him and taste and see that the Lord is good. You know? Yeah. Jesus Jesus says it. He says it in John 5, 39. He says, he says you search the scriptures. And this described me so well, especially when I was going to Bible college. Oh my goodness. The Lord hammered me with this first. He says, you search the scriptures because you think they give you eternal life. But the scriptures point to me, yet you refuse to come to me to receive this life. Right on. The Bible is a treasure map, and Jesus is the treasure. Come to him. Come to him. That's all you need to do is come to him. Invite him into your deepest fear. Invite him into those sins in your life. Invite him in. Uh, to, to work with you on those forgiveness issues that are so important because you are not forgiven if you do not forgive, okay? That's for real. That is for real. You will remain unforgiven as long as you do not forgive, okay? You remain in spiritual darkness and spiritual blindness in hell, in the outer darkness, until you forgive. So work that out with the Lord. Ask him for his help to forgive from the heart until you love that person deeply who wounded you, who did that thing, okay? Until you love that father who might have, you know, molested a, a little girl or something. You know, like if you were the little girl who was raped by your own father, work it out with God. God can handle that level of forgiveness. I just kind of threw out the worst case scenario, you know, type situation. Actually, uh, Actually, I, there's a story about a young lady who, who was raped by her father. She had two children by him, and he drove her to the abortion clinic and got them aborted. And she couldn't come to Christ because she um, 
I had such guilt and shame over murdering her babies, murdering her babies in abortion, right? She was just struck with shame and guilt. She couldn't come to Jesus. But finally she did. And when she did, she was going to commit suicide. But when she did come to Jesus, Jesus had her two little girls on his, on his lap to, to introduce them to her. And, and that's just so beautiful. Jesus is so good. Jesus holds no records of wrongs. He forgives you. Forgive whatever situation you need to do that. It's really important. I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Okay. We're, we're going to wrap this up because we're going long here today. But that's what a Christian mystic's all about. Hazel has some more comments. Um, yes. <laughs> I love your comments. I prayed to I prayed uh, for one elderly woman, uh, and after she said, "What denomination are you?" and I said, "It's it's Jesus has a denomination, or we don't just." Okay, I'm trying to understand this. Yeah, we don't go by labels or denominations. It's just about Jesus. That's that's me too. That's me too. Jesus is the most mind-boggling representation of an ultimate revelation of the divine God. Absolutely. John 1.1. 1, 1. He is the Logos, the Word. The Word. You know, the universe means one word. Okay? The universe is God. Yeah? And that actually, the, the New Age will refer to God as the universe. Right? Little do they know, they're praying to Christ. And Christ is just going to introduce himself to a whole lot of them. And they're just going to come... Because they're they've been prepped. They talk about Christ consciousness and you know the universe and all this. And they're on to a lot of things. Because they don't have their heads in the sand and living in a box like a lot of people in the church do. He is the logos, the alive word and the persona of the word, the beginning word. And with God and was God. He was with just reading her comment there. Thank you for that, Hazel. And God bless you all. I love you. Uh, Travis says, you're so right. I still revere astrology as biblical uh, because it is. There are signs in the heavens that God put there. It's all Christ. Lots to say. Glad to experience your vast perspective, which the Lord has been building this into me for 42 years. So uh, I've been after him since I was a little child when he appeared to me in my treehouse. And I recognize that I have a loving Heavenly Father, who does not judge us. He just wants always the best for us. So, thank you, Travis, Bell. I love you guys. This is awesome. This has been an amazing night owl Bible study. This, this was a prophetic painting that me and my little girl did, you know, that night owl Bible study was meant to be. This is the image that God gave us to paint in a prophetic painting episode like two years ago. And now it's happened. I completely forgot about that and whatever, but here it is. So, and here you are. Thank you for joining us. Our tribe. Okay. Yeah. Travis Bell, you're having a tough time seeing this on the Facebook page. Yeah. It's actually, I'm going on my own personal page because I have a lot more connections through that. But I have I have made some videos on the Christian Mystic page, um, but but if you want to catch it live, YouTube definitely is a way to go. Daniel Lovett on YouTube. If you're on Facebook and you're hearing this, subscribe to that if you want to. Stay in tuned for uh, future episodes of Night Owl Bible Study. Bless you all, guys. Love you. Okay. Bye, guys.